Meet Arnold. He just wanted to go down to the first floor. Well, if you're in such a hurry, let's take the express route. Congratulations, Arnold. You're now falling faster than your self-esteem after high school graduation. The elevator cables snapped. The brakes failed. And you, Arnold, have three seconds to figure out how not to become a meat casserole in a metal coffin. The elevator is moving at 60 miles per hour, the speed of a leopard, or, <laughs> well, pretty much anyone who's falling. It's an express ticket to the underworld. No stops. Awesome inferno flip, Arnie. <laughs> the hellish judges are thrilled. But it's time to head back to the elevator. Stop shouting and smashing the buttons, Arnold. Typing into Google how to survive a falling elevator in three seconds. Three, two, one, and Google doesn't have time to load. Physics says during freefall, the body and the elevator accelerate equally. So Arnold feels weightless, like an astronaut, except without the suit, the air, or the future. When the elevator hits the ground, it stops instantly. But Arnold's organs don't. They keep moving inside him, like passengers on a bus without seatbelts. A true biological sandwich. We deliver anytime, anywhere. Even the falling elevators. Arnold, the exit's on top of the bag. And yeah, dude, you're still falling. Wait, look, Google finally loaded a tip. Jump right before the impact. Genius. Even if the jump were perfect, it would reduce the fall speed by 1%. That's like putting on a helmet before a nuclear explosion. <laughs> you look prepared, but you're still fried. But hold on, there's still hope. If you lie flat on the floor, the impact spreads evenly across the body. Theoretically, you could survive if the elevator fell from the second floor, or if it were made of marshmallows. No? Then just relax, Arnold. Gravity will do everything quickly, efficiently, and, well, painlessly. For it, not for you. Everything worked perfectly. The impact really did spread evenly <laughs> across every bone. Wait, are you in a coma? Looking at you, you'd think you're dead, but you're still alive inside. In a coma, you're unable to respond to external stimuli. Because of this, you'll be the best K-pop fan. And you'll be able to listen to the same song on repeat for years. People can be in a coma from a few days to a dozen years. Edward Obara fell into a coma at the age of 16 and spent 42 years this way. According to patients, during a coma, they feel like some kind of matter. They wandered along long and damp corridors, mazes, went through complex oh. mechanisms. The degree of a coma is determined by the Glasgow Coma Scale, where 15 points is clear consciousness and three points is brain death. Arnold, they're gonna turn off the machine. Wake up uh -uh. and I promise no more experiments on you. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Come on, Arnie, you can do it. I never thought I'd say this, but you really had me worried. How are you feeling? Are you speaking Klingon? You became one of those who, after a coma, forgot their native language and began to speak in a completely foreign language. Hey, that looks really bad. You need immediate hospitalization. You're not gonna make it to the hospital. Your heart could stop. You need an emergency blood transfusion to maintain pressure in your circulatory system. During the Vietnam War, coconut IVs were sometimes used to treat the wounded. Amazingly, coconut water is quite similar to human blood plasma. 
So what do we have? Cola. Okay, let's get to work. But first, you need to get rid of all the gas. If the gas contained in the drink gets inside your blood vessels, it'll literally tear you apart from the inside. Cola contains sugar, glucose. This is a perfect source of fast energy and allows you to really perk up. It seems to have worked. The cola has taken root in your body. But your appearance has changed just a little, buddy. Even your hair has changed color. But on the other hand, you'll be a most welcome guest at any children's party. With so much caffeine in the cola running through your veins, you only have to sleep once every three days. Now, you have much more time than regular people. After all, even professional athletes drink cola for a quick dose of energy. And you can always get a refill at the nearest supermarket. No, stop, you kamikaze nutball. Just one single Mentos could turn you into a surface-to-air missile. Don't worry, it won't ruin your day. Cola even helps combat mild depression. But to be honest, Arnold, cola in your blood is actually deadly. So, you're saving innocent souls, are you? Be careful not to get yourself into trouble. Phew! Seems like you dodged a bullet there. Or not. I'm guessing you're gonna be stuck here for a while. And you'll have to survive without any food at all. Try to imagine your Angus Barbieri, a man who didn't eat anything for over a year. Shocking doctors. He lived a normal life, going to the toilet just once every 40 days. At the end of his fast, he weighed 180 pounds having lost 275 pounds. After 12 hours of fasting, you turn pale and weak, but a fat person feels better because they have fat tissue reserves. At this time, dizziness sets in, and an unpleasant smell comes from the mouth. Oh, Arnold, there's water here. See, Arnie, always look on the bright side of life. Fasting can serve good purposes. Gandhi fasted for three weeks in protest against the caste system in India. Christian Bale lost 66 pounds for his role in The Machinist. And medieval monks fasted to hear the voice of God. Like if you wouldn't last a single day. Unlike a person's mind, on the fourth day, the body accepts hunger as a given. During this time, a sharp loss of weight is observed, along with weakness. The body always needs food. So when it's not there, it has to use fat and muscle tissue. This releases ketones, which are extremely harmful to the body. Headaches and weakness develop. And in the worst cases, there's vomiting with gastric juice, confusion, and even death. After two weeks, you'll have a constant feeling that you're cold. Your consciousness often becomes cloudy, and you don't understand what you're doing. Oh, Arnie, here comes help. Not quite what you expected, but anyway, Arnie, buddy, you're saved. Hey, what's up, Arnold? You got bad problems again. Well, experiments on YouTube are good for views, but not so much for your health. Congratulations, you are prematurely aging. There's almost nothing you can do. All creatures age. Well, almost all. The naked mole rat, for instance, practically doesn't age at all. The naked mole rat has a unique genetic structure. It is a very small number of mutations, and therefore no age-related diseases. It hardly ages at all, and most often it simply dies in fights with other animals. Naked mole rats live underground digging their own passages, so sometimes they're called naked diggers. Arnold, what are you doing? Kids are watching us. Ah, are you imitating a naked mole rat? Do you want to see how everything goes on down there? Telomeres are responsible for aging. They're the tips of chromosomes that protect the chromosomes from damage. Over time, telomeres become shorter. When they become too short, cells stop dividing and die. But not in the case of naked mole rats. Be careful. As I said, mole rats live underground and are typically very aggressive. 
Naturally, since they don't die from diseases, fights are the only thing that somehow regulates the number of mole rats. Without fights, mole rats would have overrun the earth long ago. The naked mole rat is not the only animal that doesn't age and dies young. Among the ageless animals are also turtles, whales, jellyfish, fish, and salamanders. In general, a bunch of things that fly, swim, or crawl. Apparently, walking is harmful. Were you prescribed antibiotics? Don't be scared, but they always do have a bunch of side effects. Hang in there, it'll pass. Don't do that, Arnold. Bacteria can adapt to antibiotics and develop immunity to them. That's how resistant bacteria emerge. Resistant bacteria kill about 700,000 people every year. The good news is that when bacteria compete with each other, they produce substances toxic to one another. So while scientists are creating new antibiotics, we can try to pit bacteria against each other. You'd have been better off recycling the antibiotics. It's in trash bins where a huge number of bacteria accumulate, which can come into contact with various antibiotics and create a Superbug. Well, your immunity is already weakened by your illness. And now this too. Antibiotics are designed for known bacteria. If new ones emerge, our antibiotics will be powerless. Recently, scientists discovered almost a thousand bacteria in the glaciers of Tibet, almost all of them unknown to science. It almost sounds like the beginning of a horror story, especially in the case of global warming. Superbugs are not easily treated, Arnie. It takes a lot of time to create a new antibiotic. Seriously, Arnie, you're planning to search for a superbug using ChatGPT. By the year 2050, someone will die every three seconds from diseases caused by superbugs. But in May 2023, a bowson was created, a new antibiotic against one of the three most dangerous superbugs. Scientists were assisted by AI in this discovery. Arnold, in your condition, you should be in bed, not conducting experiments. You even kind of look like a bacterium right now. Buddy, I really wouldn't risk it with that unknown solution if I were you. But then again, you've got nothing to lose. Wow, you got lucky. I don't even know how that's possible. Fools and beginners always get lucky, and in this case, you're both. You feeling bad again, are you? I told you there'd be side effects. The main thing is not to create a new superbug. No! Arnold, come on! It seems that he's about to be robbed by a homeless bum. Or rather, he could be robbed if this lazy lunkhead at least had some money. Thank God, I was scared he was going to steal my camera. Let's see what's wrong with him. If he would have brushed his teeth even once, he would have definitely noticed he has an ulcer that hasn't healed for several weeks. This is a very alarming signal, and I know what to look for. Cancer. Even the frailest body creates millions of cells every day. But sometimes a bug occurs, a mutant is born, a cell that's different from the others. But it tries to hide this fact as much as it possibly can. If you have a healthy body, your immune system will easily detect this wayward cell. But if your body is engaged in constantly trying to treat itself, then it has no energy left to fight the cancer. Do you want one for yourself, Arnold? Easy. If your parents had cancer, then there's a 10% chance you'll get it too. No? A mutation can also be caused by radiation. For example, visiting the Chernobyl nuclear power plant without protection. Or living for a thousand days on the International Space Station. You could also smoke six cigarettes a day or eat two kilograms of smoked meat for ten years. You won't even have time to blink as this cell will turn into a huge cancerous tumor. Look, the food inside of him can't even get to the stomach. Mutated cells make their way into the bloodstream and then spread throughout the body, into the liver, the lungs, and the brain. It's time to apply poison. Chemotherapy doesn't cure cancer. It kills it. But healthy cells also have to die along with the cancer. Arnold, get out of there! Now we just have to wait. Or we can just... 
Run! Run!